So, you know, Wendy and Reg, one of the things that when I was a, an L&D leader, often a sales leader would come and they would share information about their team. And any successful business has great superstar salespeople. They're individual contributors. They uh, know their sales well. They do it well. They produce the numbers. Um, they're great at that. But then when it comes time for that sales leader, they've got an opening to promote or they want to broaden a salesperson's experience and give them new products or some new aspect of their jobs. It's like, hmm, how do I do this? How do I really figure this out? It really can be difficult for a salesperson who's so successful as an individual contributor to make that transition. And I think that's kind of what we're talking about today. When Wendy and I did the at the table session, we talked about an article, an HBR article called Leaders Don't Have to Choose Between Compassion and Performance. And it's coming up right now in the chat box. That resonates me with for today's session as well. They did a survey of 300 senior leaders across different industries. 61% said they're struggling with the need to support the company's drive for high performance with the needs of the people. And for me, that resonates to our sales leaders' success. How do you, how do you bring them out of that individual contributor and give them opportunities for promotion, et cetera? We, we need to help them, and we can. So as a learning professional, how do we do this? And you know what? All three of us have been there. We know how to do this. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. One of the things we instantly think about is a needs assessment. Right. We know how to do that. We've been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, we talk about a modern leadership movement. It can be an old fashioned leadership movement. We still had to do that. But That's what's right. exciting is we have new tools and new opportunities right now. So we know how to do this. Mm -hmm. We can do this. Mm -hmm. It is doable, right? It's, it's totally doable. Yeah. 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 Well, we have, it's like the, the, the content, the content and the vision, uh, you know, um, has had to shift, mm -hmm. but the way that we go about doing it um, has not shifted. Mm -hmm. We still start with an accurate understanding of where are we at today? Just like Wendy said, it's kind of, where are you question? Start with mm -hmm. your assessment. Absolutely. And we, when we take and have that assessment data, there's probably a gap analysis. I'm looking again to my sales team that I just described. And there's superstar individual contributors, but most likely there are gaps there. They've not done a role above their, their current level. Mm -hmm. So when we look at that, we have now a tool called the Think, Think to Drive Variability Map. And Wendy is showing it to us. If you look at the right-hand side of that map, you see that green arrow going up. That green arrow is an overall capacity rating. A little hard to read here on the camera, but the capacity rating is 63%. That is so meaningful when I go back to my sales leader and I'm like, okay, you've got a great, successful group of individual contributors. They're doing what they supposed, they're supposed to be doing. But this team is leading, leaving 37% of their capacity on the table. Wasted. Mm -hmm. yep. It's shocking when I think and about that, that phrase is going to speak to your, to, it speaks to everyone. And, yeah. and I think it especially speak, speaks to your sales leaders when you say, this is what you're laying down. This is what you're leaving on the table. And they want to know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be surprising and shocking that we can provide this type of data for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And when you look at what Wendy's holding up and you see the heavy green on the top left-hand side, that's really telling us that our team is a little lopsided, might be wonderful individual contributors, but they're in the do portion. Again, and superstar individual contributors, not a surprise there. They know how to do account partnership, and they know how to do their strategic territory initiatives. 
they've got that. Not unusual at all for a sales team. But then notice the right-hand side of that same chart Wendy's holding up. And now we know the C and no pieces of this, much less proficiency. What does C and no tell us? It's uh, proficiency in things like industry oversight, the industry insight. How do we do this? The relationship adaptness. How do we take that individual contributor knowledge and adapt it to a different role? Our sales leaders get promoted because they're a superstar in their individual territories. But now the see and know becomes so much more critical as they're going into a new role. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Kathy, for me, this just screams opportunity, right? And now I get to show up differently than um, than I've ever been able to show up before, right? I've always shown up with some piece of content. Um, you, you know, I, I mean, you know, name it, name it, resiliency, whatever, whatever it is. I've shown up with something, um, but I haven't shown up with it because data told me to show mm-hmm. up with it. Mm-hmm. like I can today, mm-hmm. right? Um, it, it's just, it's so powerful, you guys. And it speaks to the action that we can take from a movement perspective. It almost changes the, you know, we we we're, we pushed off into this section um, called, you know, do, how do we make, how do we make your, how do we get started on your leadership movement? Um, knowing where you are, do an assessment, um, knowing, how you identify opportunities and doing a gap analysis. Kathy, it's almost like changes the meaning of these things called assessment and gap analysis because you can do them together, right? They're not separate or disparate processes. As you do your assessment of, for example, your sales teams, you immediately start to understand the context of of the gap analysis in language that makes them better as a sales leader, or that helps them to run a stronger sales territory. It's like different. We're moving from a gut instinct to using data. And I think that's so critical. Yeah, I love it. We now have another tool that we can utilize called the build to sustain variability map. And that's what Wendy's holding up right now. And again, now the arrow is on the bottom. It's that same capacity of 63%, that same 37% left on the table, wasted, which is just so sad. Now the green, again, is on the top. And we're in a little different um, map here. That green, are the, they're all of those are the implement behaviors. Again, I describe this team as a really successful group of individual contributor sales um, people. So they know how to do this. How far do I have to go? How fast do I have to go? I know I need to make my quota. How do I ensure success? How do I blow it out? Get in the president's club? They know this stuff. This is what they this is what they work for. How can I be my best? I want to be in that president's club. Mm-hmm. Um, then we look at the lower left hand side. And it's our intelligence side. So there, 71% of the, um, the intelligence is 71% in this particular team. In that is how, um, what is my role in success? Now we're looking a little bit beyond just an individual contributor, but I'm part of a team. What's my role in that? I know I have to do my, my territory, but how do I go beyond that? What's happening in my territory, but what's happening in other territories? How do I think about that? And how do I structure my work? So I think something a little bit, you see, there's some green in there, but not much green there. Mm -hmm. On the right-hand side now, we've got the top is target. What's the right work I should be doing? I know the right work in my territory, but now what's the right work I should be doing for this team? How do I bring others along? I doubt many salespeople have thought about that. How do I bring others along? What are my milestones? 
If I want to be promoted, what milestones do I have to achieve beyond my sales numbers? Mm -hmm. In the lower right-hand side is the intent at 47%. We see it red there. And now what I'm looking at is, how, why is this important to us? Not why is it important to me, but why is it important to us? It's mm-hmm. Yes, It's a business. How do we define success? And again, I'm moving mm-hmm. out of that individual, individual contributor into that business environment. I think if we understand both the left side and right side together, it really does focus our movement for and moving us toward a much more exceptional team. And then we can see the promotional opportunities. Mm -hmm. As both Wendy and Reg said just a moment ago, if we do nothing, nothing changes. Mm 